Hi, I'm Julie Saini. I'm the CEO of Advocacy Beyond Borders and a global organisation supporting patient organisation groups all over the world. A couple of years ago we applied through um, our National Blood Spot Screening Committee for new, to have newborn screening added for SMA and uh, they, the process was, fun, uh, was actually approved by our federal government. So we have a two-step program in Australia. It gets recommended federally to say yes, that this disease needs to be added to this program, but it then goes to each state of Australia and they fund it with their own money. So that for us is where the problems arose, you know, each of them have, you know, a different government, uh, a Labor or a Liberal government, and each of them had their own priorities. And of course, how do you then make SMA stand out amongst every other disease out there and try and make it the most important disease so they can elevate it to the top of the pile. Um, and that's been a big challenge. That's taken us about 12 months to be able to you know, tell stories, to educate politicians, to make sure that there's many people advocating for our team. Um, it's been a really big collaborative team effort and I encourage anyone that is doing anything to do with newborn screening to get as many people involved as possible because in this case, you know, everyone makes light work of a, of a big issue like this. We got clinicians involved, we got politicians involved, we got families involved to tell their stories. Obviously, you know, pharma was involved to make sure that, um, you know, they were part of the process as well. So um, it's been really good working with all these people to ensure, you know, the, the making of that it's going to get on. and. You know, 12 months later, here we are, we've got every single state of Australia who have now committed funding for the program. Um, there's only one state left that it's pretty certain that it'll come on. They're just a little bit slow in understanding the process and what they need to do because their testing is done out of another state. So the advocacy be, advocacy be, um, has been really brilliant for newborn screening. You know, we have done lots of um, phone calls, lots of letters, um, and those key people in each state have been, you know, beautiful and they have helped, you know, so they're on our team. They want to make sure that this is being passed. They've got skin in the game. And, and I think that's really a really important message moving forward to get others, other people's skin in the game because you know, many hands make light work and I could never have done this on my own. It would still be sitting there, I, I must be honest about that. So to make sure that other people have a, a vested interest in this, you know, parents have a vested interest in this, clinicians have a vested interest in this, pharma has a vested interest in this, everyone has. And you know, it's really great to see, to see that. We did a similar thing with genetic screening. So we had a, a meeting in Parliament five years ago and we talked about the importance of having genetic screening um, available for parents here in Australia. And uh, that day I actually had um, the previous, he was then the Treasurer um, and then he got to be the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison in the room. His wife um, knew a family of mine and I, got onto her through, you know, the back door sort of thing and said, you know, can you get him there? And he came that day and he listened and he got skin in the game, you know, he wanted to make sure that he could do everything that he could to help us. And we got a, a pilot program that's been running over the last three years called Mackenzie's Mission. It was a pilot study to, um, to study many different uh, genetic conditions, not just SMA, um, to see um, people, how they feel about going through um, the process of screening before birth, how many people did it pick up, 
you know, what are the ramifications of someone who does get picked up? Would they like IVF um, to make sure they screen it out? Would they just turn around and say, oh, actually, no, we're just going to go and fall pregnant naturally? So that study is just finished um, and the findings will be presented in November. But um, before the government, before the change of government just recently in Australia, they did announce that Mackenzie's mission, the, prog the pilot program, would be funded fully from November 2023. So regardless of the study results, which I know some of the study results have been phenomenal, um, the funding will still be there to ensure that everyone in the future will get um, the test paid for on Medicare. So the test is currently $385. It tests for spinal muscular atrophy and two other conditions called Fragile X and Cystic Fibrosis, which are the three common genetic conditions out there that have the most um, effect on a family. Um, and they will be they will be funded next year. So somebody who who doesn't who can't afford it you know who can't afford the the 385 dollars for the test will be able to be looked after it's not just a, a rich man's test anymore or a you know high society test anymore it's available for everyone and you do find when you see people in the system sometimes it's a low socioeconomic people that have the worst luck and if they would have just been provided a test, things would be so different. So this is really good for, for everyone in the, in, in the country, you know, no matter what um, you know, race you are, you know, it, it's going to provide you a result. So you can choose your reproductive future and I think that's really important moving forward. Roadblocks and challenges are going to be there for everyone every day and my first piece of advice to anyone listening to this is stay in your lane you know drive your car in your own lane don't listen to the people that come and say oh you can't do that you know that's not going to work um, you know have resilience to keep going because you will get there in the end for us it took you know five years but we, we did get there I guess our, um, our main roadblock would be, you know, it got funded or it got recommended federally and then that um, juxtaposition of um, the, fe the federal recommendation following on, it didn't flow on into the states fairly quickly and that's sort of taken us a while to get it over the line in each state. There were some states that were like, yep, this is easy, let's do it it's a no-brainer and there were others that are like oh I don't know about this you know um, and then there were other states who were waiting for a second condition called um, severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID um, that whose test is done on the same panel to be passed so we sort of got a little bit um, you know lagged behind because we were waiting for something else so we were being disadvantaged which was a little bit of a shame but you know, hopefully now that it, it has been passed, they're all just buying all the infrastructure, um, the equipment to do it and training the um, staff to be able to, you know, produce these or the results for these mass testing. Uh, they'll do 200 to 300,000 babies a year. So, you know, to pick up, you know, 30 or 40 kids a year in Australia, that is just going to be life changing. And that's why you do it, you know, like I said before, you don't want to bury your child and to know that you're, to know for me, to ch know that I've changed somebody's life in five years time who doesn't even know what SMA is, is a pretty cool legacy to leave on this world. Um, like I said, resilience is the is the biggest thing that it teaches you. Um, you, you need to not listen to your haters and your doubters because they're, they're there, they're always going to be there. There's always somebody who wants to take your limelight, who wants to, you know, shout louder than somebody else. Um, you know, there's somebody out there who doesn't know or won't come to you to find the real story out and then they'll go off and, for example, we had a set of mums that in um, Queensland that wanted to do a protest on Parliament steps and they had no prior knowledge of what was going on. They didn't realise that I'd been talking to the government for eight months and they thought by placarding the steps of Parliament was going to make a big difference and it wasn't. The difference was made eight months ago when I had the initial meeting. But, you know, they're the type of challenges that you're faced and you just you calm down people. I've got it under control, but 
if you don't communicate with me, I can't tell you what's been happening. So, um, you know, that was, that was a big issue that we had to overcome. And we were lucky enough in that instance, they announced two days before their protest. So I was just like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, stay in your lane. Um, you know, there will be heartbreak. There'll be days where you're just like, I can't do this anymore. And, and I did many times, I sat there in tears going, why on earth can't I get this through? What is going on? Um, but you, you look at it, you go away, you have a bit of a break, you come back and you look at it again with fresh eyes or you sit with someone who has fresh eyes and says, hey, how can we, how can we move forward on this? And you, you've just got to come back and have another go. And yeah, I did that for many years. And you know, there were haters all around me going, you can't do this. You know, you're not professional, like to give it to somebody who can do it. And I'm just like, come and walk five minutes in my shoes. And then you'll see actually, you know, the amount of work that is put into, you know, doing something like this and, and you know, you see how hard it is. So it's a, it's a long road, a lonely road sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, there were lots of um, there were lots of partners throughout the whole process. So, clinicians definitely you need to obviously have your um, your people, your patients as your partners because who are you doing this for? You're doing this for them, and without their input, without their expertise and their knowledge, um, you can't you can't move forward. Um, and I guess the biggest partner and the most beneficial partner in the whole thing has definitely been pharmaceutical. Um, you know, to be able to, to work with those stakeholders to make sure that, you know, they had skin in the game. Yeah, I understand they've got a drug in the back end, but um, this can't be done without, without everyone's input and pharmaceuticals input was definitely really, really important through the whole process. It's been fantastic working with them, that's for sure. So we, um, we had a meeting every week and we're currently still having those meetings. We're not quite finished. So this has been going on for 12 months. So we would have a, a meeting of what was going on that week. Who did we need to talk to? Who did we need to email? Who did we, what stories do we need to tell for each? So there were seven different states and territories. So um, we would concentrate on you know, the quick wins first. So for example, in Australia, New South Wales and um, ACT uh, had a pilot program. So they were already up and running. So we felt we didn't need to talk to them for a little while because they had the big picture, they, they got it. So we went up to Queensland and had meetings with their government, talking to actually, um, you know, people who are, going to be doing the tests you know how are you going how can we help you what what infrastructure do you need input with you know is there anyone that we can connect you with can I connect you with the clinicians who did the pilot program you know just opening that channel of communication and once you opened that channel of communication you actually found out what they knew what they didn't know and what you needed to have to help them get this information. For example, our last state, which is Tasmania, have, you know, they're right back in the beginning. They don't even think they've got the draft pilot program, um, or they think they've only got a draft of the pilot program report, and it's been out for two years. So they're floundering because they've got no idea what they're looking for, and their testing gets given, uh, comes from South Australia, or is done by the people in South Australia. So um, they're sort of twice removed from it. So we're early education with them right now to even get them to understand what the process is. And look, mate, you're the last person on the list here. How about you, you know, you follow what everyone else is doing instead of going, oh, we need to read the information. We're giving them that information. They're saying they don't have that information. So sending them those reports, making sure that they're on their desks, following them up with them. Hey, is there anything else that we can do to make sure that that we can help? Um, and also talking to both sides of parliament. So the people who are in power and the opposition, that's super important. So you've got obviously, you know, premiers and um, leaders that are, are really have a vested interest in this. 
and then for example in Tasmania you know the premier he's like yeah 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 and he's you know looking around as if he's not really interested so we've got the the um, opposition leader engaged going hey this is on your his radar it needs to be on your radar so you can make sure that he knows as well so it's not just the the government of the day's um, decision. We want to make sure that it's a bipartisan decision. We want to make sure that it's it's for everyone because that's who it affects. It affects everyone. So we've had lots of um, meetings, lots of Zoom calls with MPs. You know, you get like a 15 minute window. You've got to really be succinct and get your message out in 15 minutes. And you know, say to them what you need. How how can they help you? You know, this is um, a thing, a parliamentarian is an advocate for their local community. We've got people in your local community that need your help. Here's how you can help them. Can you go and speak in parliament? Can you go and have a word to the premier or the prime minister or whoever it is to make sure that that their voice is heard. So that's sort of been the best way that we've had these partnerships work, where everyone has had skin in the game and they've wanted to, they've wanted to help the, the, the bigger picture. And, you know, we've been successful. And I think that's what we need to replicate, you know, around the world, you know, go into these countries and say, who's the skin in the game here? Who do we need to talk to? What are the stakeholders that um, will play a part in, in this for the future and let's talk to them let's open that line of communication so we can get this through quicker rather than you know who wants to wait another two or three years for you know countries to have access to this we need it yesterday there's kids that are dying and we can we can all play a part in saving someone's life i mean for me when i when i got these treatments across the line the feeling of euphoria is better than any drug you'll ever take and you just want to keep doing it over and over again and i want to give that feeling to somebody else i want others to feel how i felt when you save someone's life it is cool and you're just like oh my god i need that again i need that rush again and that's what i want to empower on the stakeholders globally to be able to say okay let's get this rush together because it's better than any drug you'll ever take in the world Thank you.